Hello and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I am your host, John Harris, and floating around the room here somewhere is my right-hand man, Gabriel. Yang, yang, yang. <laughs> and today on Rock Metal Podcast, we have The Design Abstract. They have a new album called... I should have asked you how to say this. This is so embarrassing, voice-eyed. That's a made-up word as well. Oh, man. Metem Technosis, which is... Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we've been saying Metem Technosis. Metem, it's a made-up word. Yeah, Metem Technosis. Sure. Where, where did you meet him? At the Technosis. Metem Technosis. There you go. Release on October 29th via Abstracted Records. Right now I'm being joined by VoiceSide to share some more information about this stellar release. So, VoiceSide, great to have you on the show, baby. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Fantastic. Take us through these the, so many made-up words. Um, <laughs> yep. What is this made-up word? If you could just give me a definition and you know its relative use and conjugation throughout uh, you know the English lexicon... <laughs> What what is this word? I can do almost half of that uh, because originally, you know, when we're cooking up these songs, I know what I want the story to be, but I need to call the files something, right? So there was this sort of antiquated term for reincarnation called metempsychosis, okay. and I was like, so you just take that, okay? Where can I jam technology into that? Metamtechnosis. Cool. It's basically a pun, but because that word isn't used, I don't know, I guess it sounds smart, so that's cool. But, like, <laughs> that's really all there is to it. It's, wow. uh, yeah, and it's just like, and originally that was just supposed to be sort of like a working title, and it's like, you know what? Nah, it's a pretty good title. Mm hmm. Okay. I'm actually <laughs> looking it up on the internet. It's still a relevant word in philosophy, anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah. Metampsychosis. The supposed transmigration at death of the soul of a human being or animal into a new body of the same or different species, otherwise what we would refer to as reincarnation. Yeah, or rebirth. Or rebirth. Yeah, which was sort of the idea behind the album. So it, it does actually mean something. It's not a completely made-up word, but uh, it is a made-up word. <laughs> no, but I mean, one of the cool things that uh, lately... And I don't know why. Maybe I'm just showing my age. But lately, I've been wanting to just screw the whole world and go back to, like, 1998. That's just kind of been what I wanted to do. Okay. You know, before, yeah. like, when the flip phones were starting to be cool, you know, and the Matrix was, like, the epitome of, uh, you know, everything. And all these bands were coming out, like Orgy, where you just had this, like, the late 90s view of the future was just awesome. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, so I'm I'm a little bit nostalgic with that in chatting with you because, like, well, how can we squeeze technology in there? Like, man, you just got to put the word digital somewhere or something. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> That's like half of what we do. That's our secret. <laughs> the secret sauce released right here on the Rock Metal Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. Okay, so reincarnation. Now, is it a like? A, a computer dies, like my Mac Mini dies, and it gets reborn into an iPod or an iPad? Um, what's the best way to uh, explain that? It's it's more like, well, uh, Technotheism, the last one, it left off where basically, spoilers, uh, humanity kind of sublimated into the singularity and they we're all just in one consciousness bubble, basically. We left behind human form. So this takes place after that when uh, decisions are made from the higher up AI people to be like, you know what? We can we can give them humanity back. You know, nobody's really using the Earth. And, like, you know, we kind of want to see what they're going to do with it when we're in control. So humanity as a species gets reborn, but with a whole bunch of different sort of uh, rules and, <laughs> and integrations with technology that didn't exist the first time around. Wow. So, yeah, it's pretty high-concept sci-fi silliness. Um, how much of it comes through in the record, tough to say. But, you know, well, that, that's what the story is. Yeah, and that brings a really good question. That, how do you implement that into lyrical form? That's always the balance that I continue to struggle with. It's like, on one hand, you make a song with a super kind of open and generic chorus so that people can relate to it. And on the other hand, you have all the nerdy shit, right? Like all the, the actual just beat by beat storytelling. And you got to strike that balance and it's got to be different for every song because some songs need to have exposition. You can't just have every song be 
a generic sort of whatever, like power chorus type thing. Uh, but it's tough, especially lately. I feel like the really exposition heavy songs just kind of get too nerdy and sort of just bog down the other just like really generic choruses. Um, yeah, it's a tough balance and I'm not sure how much of the storytelling comes across. I'm, uh, with the help of Logan, I'm actually trying to write out all of the story stuff in an actual story instead of just in lyrics. Mm. Um, just eventually maybe we can actually release that so that all the details are cleared up, but that will be sometime in the future. <laughs> Get it sometime in the future. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. I like that, actually. That's uh-huh. pretty good. But within the design well abstract, done. the future is actually right now. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that it's somehow finished. It isn't, unfortunately. Right, exactly. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's, there's, there's the design abstract time. It's like Inception, right? The time scale is, yeah. you know, how many Earth minutes in, in reality compared to design abstract minutes, but which one actually is real? Yeah. Well... That we need the decryptor for that, who is born of machines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. Now, also as well, I have a note here that decryptor, actually at time of recording on October 9th, 2021 here in, in uh, Earth time, uh, decryptor has a video. So I haven't even checked that out yet. But take us through uh, maybe some of these videos. To, uh, I, just uh, have, I have a bajillion questions, but okay, well, you just do your thing. Decryptor is nothing special. It's just like one of those kind of generic track visualizers. I'm really happy with like the first eight seconds of it. It looks super cool. But otherwise, it's just a generic sort of some things glitch out and it looks all cool. But it's just a visualizer for a track. It's not a it's not a real video. It's not um, a, you're not a real video. Yeah. Gatecap. Oh, man. I was going to make a joke about me and my wife with being happy with the first eight seconds, but... <laughs> Well, that is the the best part in Decryptor. Um, I was really happy with how that glitchy code stuff turned out, and then the rest is just pretty pretty basic. Nothing happens. Pretty basic. Nothing happens. Okay, well, I've got the link anyway. So everybody listening in, down below in today's show notes, you're going to have design.bandcamp.com where you can go ahead and stay in touch with everything, the design abstract, as well as a couple of videos you can check out on YouTube, which are going to be Born of Machines and Decryptor, and also as well, at time of release of this episode, the album Metam Technosis yep. will be available everywhere that you consume music. Now, that's actually a really cool thing to chat about because uh, I've had bands on before who are constantly working on evolving their ability to take massive storylines and put it into lyrics. And one that comes to mind that I've had on a couple times now uh, is Epica, if you're familiar with Epica. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and just like absolutely incredible picking, picking their brains, you know, like how in the world do you guys do it? And they're like, well, the songs are like eight minutes long, so we've got some time. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, fair. That's fair. (laughs) You know, but similarly as well, I guess my next question for you that, you know, I would probably ask uh, them as well is how do you know which songs get what I'll call the pop song treatment that gets the power chorus where everybody's singing along. And how do you know which songs are going to be, you know what, this is the chance in the album for maybe a bit of storytelling. Okay. Well, I don't know what Epica's answer would be like. They're, they're a huge inspiration on the early, all the symphonic shit that I used to be doing. That was like them and a couple others were the inspiration. So that's pretty cool. But I would say, uh, track one generally whether it's past the intro so like actually track two the first real song in my opinion has to have like a good poppy power chorus just because that's what everyone's hearing right off the bat we don't want to get into any like lore right away um and then after that you can slowly song by song let it devolve into the the nerdy shit until you've reached your halfway point then you got to bring them back with another poppy song (laughs) <laughs> and that should be the bangerest one of them all, which is how we've structured Metamtechnosis. Um, the bangerest one of them yes. all. <laughs> yeah, uh, which, have you heard the whole album? Or just I, the singles so I far? Have, I have heard the whole album. Now, um, 
it was not immediately before the interview, but I remember it. Okay. It flowed really well, and I dug what you guys are doing. And it's just where I was coming from. And again, I'm dating myself, and I hope you take it as a compliment, though. Is everything I'm looking at from the artwork to the concepts just shoots me back into like 1998, and I just nice. I mean it as a compliment, though. <laughs> oh yeah, that's not an insult. I mean, that's yeah, that's fine. We do a lot of Matrixy stuff. Um, and Fear Factory. So, I also get a Fear Factory vibe. Yes, we've recently heard that. Um, we're still trying to figure that out because it's not a band that any of us have ever listened to, weirdly enough. But like, we get the comparison often. Mm-hmm. So I've been trying to go back through and see what exactly, uh, you know, what exactly is there with that. Um, but the reason I was asking was because Aberration Omega is like the proper like pop metal banger track. And you, know, you stick that past the halfway point. Lyrics can be generic as hell or whatever. Just bring them back for the end. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I do it. At least two songs have to have generic sort of choruses. Um, and then you can bog down the middle bits with, uh, with all your storyline and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> storyline and stuff. Now, going into... Might, sir. <laughs> going into the album itself, uh, I like to get... Speaking of nerdy, I like to get nerdy with tech stuff if okay. depending on how much you know um like the guitar sounds on the record or the you know some of the sounds that we see on the record or the recording of the record anything yep. that you are willing to share or talk about i i love to chat about and you could get as nerdy as i use this guitar pick well that's fine i did also produce and mix and master the whole thing so i do know that stuff <laughs> um now, I will say, I don't usually shamelessly plug stuff, but my personal YouTube channel, which is uh, Voyaside, I actually went over the process. I think it was of Born of Machines, but I break down in like excruciating, boring detail a lot of the album processes that I use, including how we sample drums, because spoilers, we don't have a real drummer. Um, a lot of the ways that I make guitar sounds, all that sort of stuff. Just going to throw that out there. Um, but as far as guitar sounds on this one... It was, uh, I guess, fittingly, it was a fusion of real and synthesized, as it would be. Mm -hmm. Um, We used a virtual 5150 for the rhythms, and then we layered that with a real dual rack through that Hughes and Kettner, which has V30s. Um, So all of the chunky, gritty low end you hear on the rhythm guitars, that's coming from the real... uh, dual rack Mm -hmm. and then all the really fizzy super detailed stuff again same guitar channel but uh just the other the high end of it that's virtual yeah um makes sense yeah (laughs) somebody recently asked me to describe okay what's the difference between like a a rectifier and a 5150 and the best way i could describe it is there's like a high-end hair on a 5150 yes which drove me crazy for a long time yeah i don't like it um (laughs) <laughs> the the other way you can tell right away though is if you've got like a half stack or a full stack and you plug them both into the same volume when you palm mute the dual rack your clothes shake like the house shakes you know the 5150 it's got chunk in the low end but that dual rack like it's ridiculous like oh my god it's going into bass frequencies when you like palm mute down tuned yeah. that's how i can tell at least in real life it doesn't carry super well over a mic but like you feel it in your guts when you're playing a real one (laughs) Mm -hmm. um but yeah lately i've become a real sucker for the 5150 logan much prefers the dual rack and it's kind of been a a compromise because i just love what you can do with the 5150 yeah yeah but there's a reason it's everywhere baby yeah (laughs) i went ahead and found the youtube channel for you your personal youtube channel and i put a link to that Perfect. I much I appreciate that a lot. Uh, warning: It is fairly boring. I'm like very deadpan. But if you want to copy the design abstract, this is like an instruction manual. Whoa. Um, it's it, at least I do my best to be like this is exactly how we get the sounds that we get, because I would really love if more bands sounded like this. <laughs> the reason we do it is because we want more of that stuff out there. So I hope it's helpful to somebody. Cool. Now, since I've got the mix engineer on, the biggest, broadest question ever. What was your okay. vision before sitting down at the desk to mix? Ooh, this album 
kind of stressed me out a bit because some of the complaints we got with technotheism was that you can't hear the guitars and it's like you know there's all the backing tracks as you call them all the symphonic stuff and that's like way more present than guitars and me as someone who does all the scoring and all the drums and vocals and not the guitars i'm like good perfect right Um, that's what i was going for thank you yeah exactly uh yeah some people didn't like that and so this time i was like okay i'm going to see what it's like if i mix this a little more contemporary it's not like super freaking you know metalcore or anything but it's it's tighter it's more contemporary and the orchestral and the synth stuff is a lot lower than the guitars the guitars are very present uh comparatively i said i'm gonna try that i'm gonna see what it sounds like if i hate it i'm changing it but i'm gonna see and it we, we kept it uh it's pretty much it's not how i would prefer it sounded for me personally, but I do have to respect the fact that the other guys I work with, the two guitar players, are both phenomenal and they do deserve to be heard. Yeah. If they sucked, I would just mix it down and I would do it the way I wanted. But it's kind of a shame because like the only like with Logan, the the rhythm guitar player, right? Like he always plays riffs. Like always. The only chords that are in this album that are just like generic power chords are the ones that I forced him to put in, like the ones I just deleted what he wrote and <laughs> recorded over it, or uh, the song that Matt wrote. Um, but like, as far as Logan goes, like he just never quits playing the freaking guitar, and it's just a shame to bury it. So oh, no. that was the mindset. How do you then, as a going back to the orchestration of it with symphonic elements, you've got a lot of mid range that are then fighting for yeah. the same space. So. How do you strike that balance? And that could even be a mixing question as well, but I think it's more of an arrangement question. Um, when I was working on Logan's uh, solo project he does with his wife, Lore Master, we, his arrangements are even more dense and more insane than Design Abstract. And I realized what I could do is <laughs> scoop away all the mids and just about everything and let it fight it out in the high end where everything is more detailed and smaller. Mm -hmm. And so I did somewhat the same thing there. Um, I, for the most part, all the mid lows are gone out of everything just because that's also a kind of more contemporary metal mix. Uh, And in general, I have a place for everything, but man, the symphonic stuff basically just has to live in like, you know, the one K, two K range, and then the guitars above that, and the snares below that kind of, yeah. and that's that's about it. Uh, for the most part, I don't do as much EQ as I just do pure balance stuff. Um, you know, if you mix, say, like a string arrangement up to a level where you can hear it, not that you can consciously hear it, but that it's filling in the sonic gaps. When you mute it, you notice it's gone. But when it's there, you don't necessarily notice it's there. Right. That's kind of what I did with a lot of that stuff, where it's like, if you mute it, it's definitely missed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can't make out every detail, which sucks for me, because I love hearing that. But it's kind of how it has to be. Yeah. It's um, kind of like my life. If you mute it, you notice it's gone. Anyway, um, on to happier topics. <laughs> Other than John's self-esteem. Just kidding. Cool. So we've chatted about the new album from the Design Abstract, Metam Technosis, out October 29th via Abstracted Records. Links down below in today's show notes for design.bandcamp.com, as well as Voyaside's uh, personal YouTube channel, as well as some links to some lyric slash visualizer videos for Born and Machines and Decryptor. We've chatted about reincarnation, nerdy songwriting, late 90s view of digital technology in the future as well as a slew of other things. Dual Rex, Vintage 30 Speakers, 5150s. We even talked about dumping 241 hertz in a modern metal mix. Uh, <laughs> what else did we chat about? Uh, that little play of the other upper mid-range of where everything is sitting. Cool. I think we chatted yeah. about everything. Is there anything that I missed, Voice aside, that you wanted to chat about, that you were hoping we would <laughs> chat about? Uh, no, I never really know what to expect with any interview things. It's cool that you wanted to get into the more technical side. I don't believe I've done that before. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's something that's that's nice to chat about. Um, it is. But I think yeah. so. Yeah, I, well, I do too. I love all that technical stuff. That's what I spend all my time doing more than anything else, more than actually practicing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah who need, you don't need to practice. You just got to sound good. Yeah. 
It's easy. Right. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Well, great having you on the show, Voice Side. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.